For those who ski and snowboard across the world, Alaska represents the pinnacle of the sport. A region of vast, glaciated mountains covered every year with 80 to 100 feet of snow, demanding the highest level of technique, protocols, and respect. There is nowhere like the Chugach. It is the foundation of the steep life. For over two decades, Dean Cummings has committed his life to exploring and pioneering the Chugach Range, guiding skiers, snowboarders, and film crews on terrain unlike anywhere else on the planet. When we came here in 1991, nobody had really accessed the mountains at the level that we were about to, using planes and helicopters. It was so remote that you had to use some mechanized equipment to get there to explore these untouched areas. It was, it was eye-opening, it was humbling. No one had ever seen so many separate glaciers, so interconnected, so close together. It was a whole new world. Using mechanized equipment, you're getting yourself fast forwarded to, to the top of these mountains. And almost all of us were trained under the American Avalanche Association or um, various organizations where we were more taught about digging a snow pit in the starting zone. And, how to assess the snowpack from the bottom up. And so assessing from the top down became a huge part of this. Dean's process is to start with a weather and snowpack forecast for the region of operation. Sticking to routes and terrain that minimize the exposure to hazards, assess the snowpack continuously, and use good backcountry protocols like carrying the right equipment and maintaining visual verbal communication throughout the day. really just puts you in the moment and um, there's no other feeling quite like it. When you're looking at big lines like doing something off Meteorite or, or Mount Francis, it's, it's definitely um, more about the logistics. You gotta have the right time, you gotta feel, get the right snow, the right weather. Physically you gotta feel right.
crux of the dragon's back is a knife edge ridge midway down the descent. Dean carefully navigates the tight squeeze to the pickup zone below. Not that you can just go up and bag these things any day or every day, it really is about the right time. The first time I laid my eyes on the tusk was in 1991 and it invoked, is this skiable, is something like that skiable? And that's what Alaska was all about when we first got here, was seeing things that looked possible but you weren't sure if they were. A 400-foot rappel leads Dean to the ramp below. With the light fading, he works hard to safely descend and enjoy the moment. The Tusk was a huge, long-awaited first ascent. With many previous attempts, Dean was proud to finally check this one off the list. Deeper in the range, far away from the nearest road, the Hourglass and Godzilla sat in waiting for the right conditions to present themselves.
You know, a big descent like this takes a lot of preparing and looking at uh, the weather, the snowpack, being physically fit, mentally ready. And then you gotta have the right day. And so you head up and you're going in the mountains with, um, with a one, two, and three strike rule. And so be it, these are big, bad descents. So they already have a strike against them as far as the, the danger associated with it. A two would mean you don't ski anything unsupported, like slopes like this that I'm talking about. Um, or you don't get in terrain traps or ski above exposure. Um, but in this case, I'm hoping just to go up with a strike one big mean descent that has a lot of risk. If anything comes along as a strike two, then, then it's time to go, go home. Close to town, Mount Francis is seen easily throughout Valdez. With the conditions just right after a 20 year wait, Dean tackles the descent. When I landed, it was wild. It was like time stood still. I did one big tomahawking flip and realized one of my skis came off. The second flip, I was just looking for my ski to see if I could grab it in the air. The last thing I wanted to do was lose equipment on this huge massive face. Even with the conditions just right, Dean knew the challenge of the steep entrance and landing the 80-foot cliff drop. In this case, the reward did outweigh the risk. The stable snow allowed for effortless turns on the massive ramp below. Try hard and live hard. A lot of times, you you live lucky, and um, in this case, I was lucky in in the sense that I didn't go off that next 400 foot cliff. But you know, I would I would question something of this magnitude ever again in my life just, um, before I did anything like that again. I'm, I'm not sure I would take that big a risk again. We have this amazing thing in common, and that's living the steep life. The steep life is the health we get from it, the friendships we get from it, protecting the environment and our safety. And that's what we all have in common, and that's what we're all coming together here to enjoy. The steep life is about the risk we take as humans who are committed to getting in touch with nature and ultimately the protocols that help keep us safe, allowing us that sweet privilege. It's the privilege of living in the moment, filling your lungs with fresh air, filling your heart pounding, blowing your mind with visuals, hearing the sounds of nature, getting after it, loving it, benefiting from it, and recognizing we need to give back to protect and respect it.